like to share why I think the term detransition is important. So for me, the word detransition is not about an identity, it's more about a biological state. In my case, I went through the process of medically masculinizing myself using testosterone, but then for various reasons, I found the changes undesirable, mostly the loss of my singing voice and damage to my liver. I came to the conclusion that it was in my best interest to reverse these changes as much as possible. Beyond just my own experience though, I do think it's important to agree on the terminology used for the purposes of scientific research. So, detransition is a very clear and concise term for what is happening to a person's physical body when they undergo these changes. So, that is why I will continue to use that term. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while because I'm very passionate about this subject as a singer who was not aware of this before transitioning and neither was my doctor or the licensed psychologist that I was seeing. So, basically a person who takes testosterone as an adult in order to transition is not going to have the same vocal changes as someone going through a natural male puberty as a teenager. What can happen, I'm not saying it happens to every single person because it depends on things like dose, genetics, individual anatomy, but the vocal cords or vocal folds will grow larger, but the size of the vocal tract does not increase enough to accommodate them. This is known as entrapped vocality. So this has affected me personally and it has affected my career as a singer. So anyone who uses their voice professionally and is planning to transition should at least be aware that this is a potential risk. Conceptions about detransitioners. Number one, we were never really trans. Me personally, I questioned my gender when I was very young. One of my earliest memories was asking my mom if I could be a boy, and I also suffered from gender dysphoria that persisted into adulthood. This was the reason I eventually sought out medical transition. Also, keep in mind that regret is not the only reason people detransition. They can actually detransition for a variety of reasons. Two, we hate trans people. This is so the opposite of where I'm coming from. I believe that trans people deserve health and happiness just like everyone else. And everything I've advocated for on this page, such as more research and better healthcare, is actually in the best interest of trans people as well as for all people. I guess I only had time to touch on those two things today, but please follow me for part two. I was definitely excited to transition. I saw it as this pathway to a new me, a new life, a happier life. But there was a part of me that felt kind of off about it and scared, and I just attributed that to internalized transphobia. But I really wish I would have looked inside myself and examined it a little more. You do? How can others support detransitioners? The first thing that came to mind for me is that when I was coming off of testosterone, and I'm not sure if it's the same for people coming off estrogen, but I have never felt so bad in my entire life. I had no energy, I fell into a deep depression for a few weeks, and it was hard for me to even get out of bed or feed myself. So if you know someone who's detransitioning in real life, they might need some support on just basic life things like that. I think it's really important to respect detransitioner's boundaries as well. I'm really open with my journey, but not everyone is going to be the same way. Also, I don't think this applies to the person who left the comment, but if someone does share with you that they're detransitioning, please don't have the first thing that you say back be, well, are you going to become a turf now? Or are you going to attack trans people? Because detransitioners have already been through a lot and it's just adding stigma and judgment. This is a joke, right? Common misconceptions about detransitioners, part three. We are all TERFs. So the first thing I'm gonna say about this is generalizing an entire group of diverse people looks pretty bad. Like, I wouldn't speak about any other group and just assume that we all have the same views and, topping, and talking points because that's just very judgmental and incorrect. 
I'm an individual and I'm entitled to my point of view and I don't align myself with any particular group or just repeat rhetoric. However, as someone who did experience adverse effects from taking testosterone and also experienced a level of rejection and hate from individuals in the trans community, I am probably going to have some views that are not fully aligned with yours. And that's fine for us to disagree with each other, but we don't need to resort to name calling or judgment.